How's it going everybody? We have a banded snake eel and it's going under the sand and it chews the burrow of a mantis shrimp for that. The mantis shrimp is bothered but then it chooses to follow the snake eel under the sand. So what is going on here? Now, number one, I don't know, but we can do some educated speculation. It's the same thing again in slow motion. This might be an escape reflex, this might be predation, or maybe there's some weird symbiosis going on between the shrimp, the mantis shrimp, and that snake eel. So this is really an event in the natural history which are filmed underwater, which I don't quite understand. Now, is this another snake eel? No, it is a banded sea snake, or sometimes also called yellow-lipped sea crate. And why I'm showing you this animal? Well, it looks very similar to that banded snake eel. Now, that is not a coincidence. So this snake here is a relative of the cobras, but uh, it's very venomous. It can really bite and hurt somebody. And here you see the snake eel on top and the sea snake at the bottom. These animals are so similar that a would-be predator who would want to uh, feed on that eel is probably mistaken, at least for a second, and thinks that this is a venomous sea snake. So this is called mimicry. Now, what is the sea snake doing here? It's going up to the surface. Why? Because it's taking a breath. Now, this is one of the few things, of course, which the sea snake as a reptile with lungs has to do, but not very often. They are, don't have a very fast metabolism. Uh, you know, they are not heterothermic. They don't uh, maintain their own body temperature and they have a small brain. So they don't need a lot of oxygen and they have skin respiration too. So they can take up oxygen through their skins. Now, here again is the eel. The eel plays the role of the snake very well and not only is it patterned more or less like the snake but it also moves like it so if you look at these undulations of the body of the eel that's very similar to the sea snake and the only thing the only feature really where you can tell them apart very well is the head so look at the head of that banded snake eel that does not look like a snake head like a reptilian head and so nevertheless, it's a very successful mimicry. And a lot of snake eels are actually constantly buried in the sand. But this one moves about. Now here is again the snake. So you can see the similarity in the movement. They're both very close to the substrate in most cases. So I thought that was a really interesting event, which I just, you know, randomly... I had the chance to record this predation or, you know, this diving into the sand of the snake eel. Let me know in the comments what you think happened here. I'm, I'm genuinely not sure. So here we have the sea snake. Now, what do we have here? 25 future dives. This is obviously uh, our new book. Our, I mean, James Reimer and myself. Uh, James is a professor at the University of Syracuse in Okinawa. He's an expert on corals. I'm, I hope that's uh, true. I'm an expert on fish. So we teamed up and we wrote a book where we explain environmental problems in the ocean and they explained as dive briefings. So this is available via Asian Geographic as of early May. And uh, check it out and see you soon.